This podcast is part of E2C Network, where we share the whole Auburn experience. David Housel said it best, the whole of the Auburn experience. It encompasses a wide variety of things, people, and even places, but at its heart, at its core, it is all about our sports, it is all about our culture, and yes, it is all about our family. And because it is about a family, we got to have people involved here, especially on a podcast dedicated to that. So I'm your host, Kyle, as always, alongside me, my fellow host, Mr. Austin Scott. War Eagle Austin, episode 25. War Eagle Kyle, we are ending the first quarter on our way to 100. 100. <laughs> this is our, this is going to be my thing. I'm going to have a play. I, I was literally going to say that you, this has now become your shtick for the show. Thing. This is my thing. This is our, our Colby Wooden. This is our John Samuel Schenker 2022 version. This is our, uh, Keep going. Uh, Darren Bates. Darren Bates. Darren Bates. That's a better one. There. This is our Kyle Frazier as a free safety. <laughs> and this is our. Not even Kyle I Frazier know. original. Kyle Frazier 2.0 no. is a safety. <laughs> and that's all I got. I, I, I'm going to research it more, but this is becoming my thing. And this is episode 25. And that's how people will remember it. You know what I would love is if you can like pull a Clint Richardson and go back into the history and find like next week number 26 like joe schmo of 1913 on that team or whatever I, you know 26 what is difficult 20, justin garrett is who i think of right off the bat that's one too that was that man that's not that long ago no and that makes me still feel old all at the same time i can just remember him picking up the fumble and running it like 80 yards in the louisville chick-fil-a game to start the 2015 year. oh i was at that game austin god i feel so yeah. old now that's about it. That's about all I can think of at number 26, but I'm sure there's more out there. But yeah, that's going to be my thing. I'm, I'm now, I'm setting it in stone. Yeah. Okay. Well, there it is. Everybody's got to have their thing. And if that's what it's got to be for you, well, that's what it's got to be. <laughs> uh, we like to start off our show just kind of rounding out some things that we're probably not going to hit into great detail. Uh, we got to talk about, um, well, I was going to say the elephant in the room. We can talk about that, but I kind of was meaning more about uh, the basketball team. Uh, maybe just some quick thoughts about obviously at this point of uh, or this episode, we are just off of an embarrassing Kentucky loss. Can I can I just say this and see if you agree with me, Austin? That game felt like the old Auburn versus Kentucky. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, no, I think so. And and I'm going to get this wrong. But Justin Ferguson of the Auburn Observer said it like it it was one of those worst losses since. And it and one of them was whether it was by 25 or you know he kind of kept updating it because the margin kept getting bigger and bigger, mm. um, but it was one of those worst losses at Kentucky since, and one of them was Bruce's first team or something like that. And I was like, that's what that's what this feels like. It feels like one of those where we we kind of talked ourselves into having a little chance going up there, and then the game started and it got bad. And and it it you know there was things looked good you know for about the first half of the first quarter or first, uh, first half of the first half. Uh, and then it just kind of all went off the rails, but uh, it, it was rough. And uh, I don't think we've, we've seen a loss like that since one of those first Bruce Pearl teams where he was getting his guys in there. Um, and, and, you know, by some of the reactions, I think some of us have forgotten what that's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look, this was me, you know, about 10 minutes left in the second half. It was me. That was just me. Just sitting there, you know, a little bit sad, a little bit despondent, a little yeah. bit uh, forgetting. Oh, hello, darkness, my old friend. This is what this felt like when we yeah. were not confident, when we were not constantly trying to, um, well, not, tr we're always trying to, but not able to stay abreast of the way Kentucky competed. And that's really what it felt like. So it's not that it was a step back, but it was kind of a return to hello, darkness. This is the, my, my old friend, just it really made me appreciate where we've been. And I wish a lot of us as fans would kind of recognize, Hey, yeah, man, we, we haven't felt this way against Kentucky in quite some time. I've been talking a lot of trash with Kentucky fans for a little while now. So it was kind of like one of those times, okay, I'm just going to sit back now and just take whatever shut up juice comes my way. And they, and I'll, I'll be honest, Kentucky fans, at least here, the YouTube side of things, some of them came out of the woodwork. They always do, but for the most part, I think they kind of at least appreciated being able to return to form themselves. 
Um, so we, we can put that to the side. I think this feels like a bit of a stretch in terms of how we talk about Auburn related things here, but it is our rival. And I think maybe we should at least say something to this controversy that's going on in Alabama with the situation with Brandon Miller, right? Is that, that, that mm-hmm. um, and the whole him his involvement with a, a murder case back there and whether he was involved directly, indirectly, all that, all that kind of stuff. And I'll be honest with you, Austin, I've actually tried to stay out of this because it felt icky to me in in either side of it. I I didn't really know what to feel about it other than that doesn't look good. But Mm. at the same token, I don't want to be the one person, you know, ah, get him, you know, kind of thing. So I I like to wait and see what happens, but I got to be honest with you. I'm sure you saw it. Oh yeah. Pre-game Alabama comes out after all this comes out and there's back and forth about how much validity there is to his involvement. They have a little pregame celebration that is, there's no mistaking it, that is a clear shot at, well, essentially for those viewing, and this is my interpretation of it, of him being frisked by one of his teammates. Is that how you interpreted that in the pregame thing, or would you, was that a bit of a step out? No, yeah, I think that's what it was. From what I understand, that's his, you know, we've made this thing, which I kind of like it, where where we the starting lineups, you go down to right. the wall the walk on usually and you do your little handshake with him and you and you go on uh to you know as you're being announced and from my understanding that has been his thing all year has been the the pat down or the the frisking yeah that's good context uh, there however i Tone think deaf. there has to be some foresight if when Tone all deaf. this went down in january with his teammate before we ever knew of any alleged brandon miller involvement that's got someone's got to say, hey, we we can't be doing that. We yep. it doesn't matter what it is. We, let's let's not even let ourselves um, appear like something's going on. Um, and and that's really all I kind of want to say about it. Is I agree. I'm disappointed with kind of the one how all of this has continued to play out, and both sides of kind of I don't really think everyone's really wanting the truth and justice. It's how can it best serve my basketball team or how can it best serve my basketball team? Cause I don't want him playing. Um, and, and I don't think either one is right. I think what's most right is that we make sure there's justice for a little boy who's never going to see his mom again, no Absolutely. matter what. Yep. Um, and so the most disappointing part of all of it to me is just the, the whole PR aspect of it from, it's, it's not been good from the beginning. Awful. Nate Oates's comments about, you know, wrong place, wrong time, or, or we didn't have all the information, or maybe we did have all the information. It's just been a PR nightmare over there. And, and I'm not any PR expert, communications expert, but that is the field I work in. And I just, I feel terrible for the people having to deal with it over there. Um, because I'm sure it's been some late nights, but, uh, it's just a mess. It's been a big mess that has really escalated to, to an international scale. Uh, (laughs) It's it's funny how it has gone international. Like that's, It's crazy. Um, I, I agree with everything you said there. I, I still uh, operate with a de- degree of caution, but the lack of tone deaf um, decisions and non decisions that have continued to persist for whoever, Brandon Miller or otherwise, I think is is continues to move my sympathy. Not sympathy is not the right my leniency of understanding more over to the non-leniency column and i was i was a little bit upset last night when i saw that i was like i haven't been upset yet i've tried to stay out of it but it, it, it's a it's a big mess and i hope auburn fans will just for the most part stay out of it at this point let it figure out it'll play itself out and fortunately no outcome probably no no outcome will fix the bigger problem of this so yeah. Just wanted to kind of put our little take on that because that's been out there. One happy thing, though, that we can talk about and celebrate to round out this segment, though, women's basketball has secured a winning season for the first time in three seasons, it feels like. A while, two, yeah. Two, three seasons. I know we went to the tournament with right. Coach Flo at least three seasons ago. So that's why I was like, it's not like the longest time, but it's been long enough. Right. And you know, the uphill climb that coach Johnny Harris has had getting them to back to respectability only in their second season is now secured the 10th seed in the sec tournament and a bye. That's incredible. And I just want to applaud and congratulate and just, 
you know, be happy about something Auburn basketball related right now. <laughs> that's just, yeah. that's all I want. No, you're right. And we've talked about on this, on this podcast and on this um, network, how much we really, really like coach Johnny Harris and what she's building. And you can see the foundation laid and the excitement there were, it was senior day. I recognize that there were a lot of people at that game today as the regular season finale. Um, and, like, let's just be honest, that has not been the case. Right, I've been to the this season, and yeah, it's not and the case. So it's fantastic, and I really hope that that is kind of, we've talked about before how we want both programs to kind of hit their stride together, and I really feel like we're close to having that happen. Um, you know, at least, I'm not saying we're both going to be competing for championships together, but it looks like both can maybe have that moderate success in the right. SEC be competitive here at the same time very soon, so – Congratulations to the team. Really looking forward to what they do in the tournament. Maybe they have some surprises up their sleeves. Um, but, I mean, Coach Johnny Harris is is figuring her thing out and getting her foundation laid, and, and she's doing a great job. And all what – it's very I, – I listen, I, we talked a little bit about uh, pre-show when we were just hanging out with people on YouTube about comparisons, especially in basketball, and that not meeting expectations. You know, I, I don't want to sit here and make this comparison – but it feels very similar to the Bruce Pearl arc right now of getting here, realizing, wow, there's a lot of work to be done here. And, yep. but still finding ways to surprise people. I mean, think about Bruce Pearl in his first year went on that magical run in the SEC or was it the second year? Either way, early on that magical run with KT Harrell into this, into the uh, SEC tournament last year, they got that incredible win over Tennessee at home. And have done that a couple a couple of different ways over the last two seasons. So it's a very similar arc, and I think that's why we find our affinity towards her, her staff, this program right now, because we're seeing some of those good feelings we had early on for her, and obviously at that time Bruce Pearl. So yeah. just bouncing around, enjoying finding something to be happier about basketball related right now for Auburn. But let's talk about uh, some more spring sports. We're obviously going to be spending a lot of time on this over the next uh, few weeks and months. And uh, we'll give you, obviously, a smattering of things. But, you know, when things come up, we want to talk about it. So Auburn baseball, softball, we talked about it last week. Got rolling. Had a great first weekend with them both there. Big success for both teams uh, to start off that weekend. And I would say, again, another weekend of huge success Can, we're going to talk about one particular topic can we just talk about how all of a sudden usc is coming to auburn yeah isn't that weird like how that just yeah. that all that yeah. happened austin while we were like you know going live essentially last or not going live but at least it was all coming to fruition as we were kind of getting our show done last week yeah no i mean i think it was a freeze one or a blizzard warning or some, something something crazy like that. It's crazy in southern california and uh all of a sudden we're, sweet, we're changing all the plans, and, and USC is coming to the Plainsman Park this weekend. Um, really cool, though, and I know Auburn fans loved it. Another chance to get to see this team at beautiful Plainsman Park. And um, I never saw any any attendance numbers or anything like that, but it sounded like a lot of people showed out. Um, beautiful weather this weekend to be able to go. Um, and so, yeah, super cool. And uh, even better, Auburn got two wins and a tie, Kyle. <laughs> don't, Austin, don't. <laughs> Don't I've been doing very good for many episodes now, leaving the crotchety old man out of this show, and you're going to bring him out by bringing up this tie today. I cannot, for the life of me, I, I've made peace with it in soccer. Okay, I just I understand that that's a sport unto itself. I I love soccer, love Coach, our program here, Coach Hoppa. I've made peace with the tie situation in soccer. I, I cannot make peace with it in the great American pastime. I'm just sorry. Like I, I can't. I can't do it. This one, though, you know, if you really dig into it, and that's what we really want to talk about here is rule changes and things that are affecting Auburn baseball and softball, but are affecting baseball. And you could even extend it to some sports as well with this notion that we've got to speed the game up. Yeah. On one level, I understand it. We live in a generation of microwave society where we got to be on our phone nonstop and we don't have any, we, our attention span is like negative a hundred, not even a zero, just a negative a hundred. So I understand that if you want to stay relevant, you got to meet the times. I get all that. I'm not arguing. There's no validity in that argument, but some of the stuff is just frustrating. This one thing though, of them needing to go back by a certain time to California when they already had to change their, 
you understand why a game has to end by a certain point because of travel for that reason. What I don't understand is when that affects certain other games like Auburn and Alabama last year, where because of weather, they had to get out of town by a certain point when they literally are driving two hours away. Well, two, it depends on how fast they drive. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> and what route they take. But yeah, I mean, I, I was frustrated to see us come in and, come so close to winning the series outright today against USC with this this rule change affecting it yeah well they won the series they need they winning in a sweep would provide a sweep today which you know can never go uh unwanted but uh yeah just really crazy game altogether and just hate that really there couldn't someone couldn't come out victorious but um that this rule that you know and I haven't been able to see anything from the SEC side so but I just wanted to ask you I'm I'm assuming this is this was strictly for travel reasons that's my understanding is this the rule that we're discussing about this is mainly been in, is mainly been in place already but it's just kind of that notion of everything needing to speed up and and yeah being frustrating that it affects the outcome of a game because this was a a really good game for both teams where a lot of swings back and forth and you really you know if it's one of those things where it's a blowout you're like okay well let, let's just go yeah, yeah, let's all go home. <laughs> so don't drag this thing out. But this is back and forth. I mean, USC had an opportunity to win this thing in the bottom in the top of the ninth, and there was a crazy play where a player didn't step on the home right. plate and ended up being out, and they got out of the inning. And Auburn loaded the bases and had an opportunity yeah. to win it too, but it didn't come to fruition. So it was just like, can we just have one more or just whatever we need to finish this amazing? Thing that happened this weekend so yeah no new innings until i guess started before 3 30 central time yes and, that's uh, yeah or ap- no new innings can start after 3 30 central time so yeah just really big bummer but i i think i'm i don't i'm not worried but i think we're gonna see some more of these instances in the sec season with uh these rule changes we do we have a in, we've had it in softball but we have a baseball run rule Yep. This year in com- for conference games, a 10 run rule uh, after seven innings, we're not going to allow the last two innings to happen. Um, which I see a lot of that, I and I see a lot a reason for a lot of that. Um, a lot of people don't want to stick around and watch it. I do hate that we cut some chances short for those comebacks, as rare as they might be. Um, and then what we're seeing, I think a lot of people have seen it on the major league level, is uh, the pitch clock and the mound, the batter clock, and making sure the batter doesn't, you know, strap his gloves 15 different times and take 30 different practice swings before getting back on the mound. And and before we know it, we've had two pitches every 10 minutes, but uh, I think it's all in good nature. Uh, I'm kind of like you, Kyle. I kind of hate that we're just changing the game just to change the game for, for what feels like marketing purposes. But um, I do understand it and I understand, you know, the need to continue to draw eyes um, the need to, to continue to watch it or to keep it the way as competitive as possible. But um, it'll be interesting to see how these rules play out and how these rules affect games if they do, or, and how affect games um, once it gets down to crunch time in the conference. Um, I, I know we saw, we, I mentioned it briefly on the major league level, but we've already seen in spring training a game end just in because the guy wasn't in, the box, the, bat, on time. the box on time he had two strikes already if you're not in the box on time that's a strike on you and the game just ends right there um and so see, and it's spring training so that game ended in a tie which we it doesn't matter right formal, but... we would kind of go to the next inning but um you know that's going to happen at some point this season someone's going to not have a chance to win the game because they took too long and exactly and that, i think that period needs to happen but it'll be good eventually well, and see, that's the thing, because I think um, this has already happened, not the end of the game scenario, but an Auburn player, I think, got out one time in an earlier game because they weren't in the box, a box mm-hmm. quick enough, or, or there was some one of these world changes that affected it. Not yeah. a huge game-changing, altering you know, thing, but there's an adjustment period that Major League gets to have, right? Because mm-hmm. they're in spring training. No. I mean, yeah, it's a big news story, but it doesn't really affect anything. It's spring training. Yeah. So they everybody can get used to it. College baseball and softball, yeah. whether it's this rule or not, didn't have an adjustment period. No. And so you're having my biggest pet peeve, especially in, in any sport, but like football, 
I and, and basketball too. I don't want the refs to determine the outcome of game or a, or a nuanced rule like that. And that's what frustrates me. And so we're becoming so, I feel like rule focused in our drive to get faster, quicker, get, you know, get this thing done that we're losing some of the, I don't know what the word is majestic nature of the, of, yes, the, of a beautiful, of a beautiful game like baseball and softball, you know? Know. yeah i i think it's yeah I, the spirit of the game i think is being hurt and um i do hate it but i i understand it I, now kyle i'll say this and this is going to get to our crutch the old man I, i'm already there so don't worry <laughs> you know what i never hear being talked about and because we there's been a whole about to talk about how we get football faster too this week right i don't know <laughs> but what <laughs> I never hear in all these conversations is, hey, you know what? Maybe we should just cut our commercials in half. Exactly. Well, heaven forbid, you know, we do that. And I know that's where the money comes from. I know. But you must you have been listening to a certain radio show that where they discuss this, haven't you? Kyle, Kyle, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we don't, we don't, we both don't listen to that radio show ever, right? Um, but it's true. You know, if that was the case, if we really wanted to keep the game faster and more people watching it, we wouldn't watch 15 of the same Nissan ads every quarter. Yeah. But it is what it is. I understand that's the money world. I did want to bring up, you brought up the spring training kind of thing that college doesn't have that. And that's a good point. The SEC announced these rules on February 14th, yeah. which is yeah. less than two weeks ago. Hindsight's 2020, sure. And I'm not the one making these decisions, but. We played how many sprint fall games of baseball last fall? I think we couldn't get these out in that time. It's like we couldn't get those out to practice it then. I mean, that's a perfect time for these student athletes to practice these new rules that now they're going to be under. And they might have known they were coming. And I'm sure your practices, they've been working on, you know, having their own clocks and and getting used to that system. But um, yeah, I find it really ridiculous that these all these rules decide to come out, you know less than a week before the season starts. Yeah. I have a feeling, Austin, this is not the last time, whether it's Auburn baseball, Auburn softball, or SEC baseball and softball related, that we're going to be talking about some major scenario with these rules affecting Definitely. the outcome of an important of an important game. And, and yes, every game's important, but you know, the ones where races are tight, that heaven forbid, Auburn and I'd just throw Tennessee out there already in a, you know, heated, you know, feelings towards each other from mm-hmm. last season. And someone strikes out because they didn't get in the box in time at the very yeah. end of the game. You hope at that time, everybody's used to it and all that kind of stuff. But it, it, my crotchety old man side is coming out just with some of these things that potentially could happen. We'll just watch and we'll, uh, we'll understand, not like it at all, but we'll watch and to see what else happens with, as we tried to speed up the game without getting rid of the commercials for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's talk about uh, some football, Austin. We have not talked about football, at least in big chunks in quite some time. And I think frankly, that was a good thing. It was a good good reprieve from some frustrations, some now the end of the season, we've, we've, dedicated an entire episode or two or three to our love of Cadillac Williams and what he turned out of a literal turd into and polished it off and, and made it look presentable at least or potato, there. whatever you choose turd or potato, your choice. He, he cleaned it up for the family friendly thing, but yes, I threw the turd out there and I left it there to stink. Um, <laughs> just drop it, Kyle, let it go. Um, <laughs> but spring practice, is here by the time that probably most of you on the podcast side of things as well are listening to this they're probably at practice right now for the first year under coach hugh freeze and so what i thought it would be good to do is maybe just walk through the schedule talk through any thoughts about it about what they've released in terms of what you can anticipate leading up to a day first question i want to ask you do you feel like this is earlier than normal that we that we're starting spring practice uh yeah i do i do i, I don't know if it's because the month february is on it um and and i know ne- i'm never really good at remembering when it starts i'm good about remembering about when a day is yeah um but i'm never really good at remembering when spring pra- like the first day players get out there and practice with the coaching staff um 
but it does it does feel earlier it feels like we're getting that time kind of moved up more and more each year um i don't know how much of that has to do with like a new coaching staff like if next like next year with coach freeze and his staff set and him knowing the players the right. majority of them is that do you need as much time now i'm sure they're all going to take as much time as they can figure out because you can never practice too much but uh it feels like this is a very early start if not the earliest yeah i i do think he addressed this a few weeks ago saying that it would be a little bit of an early start but i wonder if it's more so because of when they could and and you know, practice. They've got spring break in the middle of this too, which you'll you'll find out. In fact, I'll I'll just kind of read off very briefly here. You can find they made a post about this on their Twitter, on most of their social media accounts, sharing your dates for when they're going to practice. And I do love the transparency when you know these things are going to happen. Most of us, obviously, media members can go uh, to some of these practice that they're invited to and get some little very limited clips and images and you know, just ideas of what's going on out there, but it starts tomorrow or whenever you're listening to this February 27th. And that is your first day of spring practice and leads into March 1st, March 1st, March 3rd. So about a week gap there, which I'm guessing is spring break. Can you confirm that Austin? What's the, what's the gap? Can you say that again? It would be the gap between the third and the 13th. So about 10 days there. That is my guess. That is when spring break is. Yeah, the uh, Monday through Friday of spring break is March 6th through 10th. There you go. Because my employer is also off at the same time. <laughs> so it's odd how that works out, isn't it? Lucky well, it, you. It, you know, that Auburn City, Lee Scott, and Auburn University every year. I mean, it's just the easiest thing to do. But the it, city, but that, that must be when, when spring break is, and so that's when they'll get a reprieve. That's really interesting. They're going to do like one week and then get a whole week off. And then come back. But it could be something that works really well because if you, they make first week about I, – I, I'm not Coach Freeze. He's going to do what he wants to do. But about the getting the routine of what practice yep. is going to be like down, the, especially a lot of conditioning, letting them get that break, however much they actually go and rest. Who <laughs> I would hope we make wise choices uh, yep. as football right. players this next spring break, seeing where we have to – crawl our way back from into relevancy. Um, but I'm not them. They can, they're, most of them are semi-adults and can make their own choices. Well, so, uh, let's, yeah, well, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just leave that one right there. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving you landmines out and you've avoided them a lot. But through that one, you around that one, you nearly stepped on and just that, blew yourself up. That one I just sniffed and I was like, oh, no. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, or turds, however you'd like to, you know. <laughs> Or potatoes. Or potatoes, whatever. Okay. Uh, leave it alone, Kyle. Um, so spring break, obviously, however they choose to work around that, but a week off there. But the rest of the schedule, every moment after that, I believe, is going to be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So the 13th, 15th, 17th, 20th, 22nd, 24th, 27th, 29th. I think that there's maybe like a Friday off or something like that for one reason or another. Uh, April 3rd. April 5th, April 7th, and the day after that will be a day, which is also Easter wow. weekend, which is also many other things going on that day. Frank okay. Thomas, uh, Bucky's is opening, which we're going to talk about that at some point. Is it opening that weekend? I believe, I believe all like that's so smart. It, it is, but it's also frustrating for people like me that like to go document all these things. Like, how am I going to make it over all these things? Like, yeah. how is it possible for me to be all these different places? I knew it was April, but I didn't know it was that. Man, that's so smart. It, it, it was brilliant, if that's what they did. Either yeah. way, so that's your basic schedule. Uh, my guess is with how things go, something will probably be changed or adjusted, especially when they started a little bit earlier, stretched it out, uh, you know, maybe a little bit longer because of the way spring break falls and all that kind of stuff. But we're going to be basically sitting in this, for a month and a half and there's going to be a lot of excitement that comes this first week especially maybe even second week but then it's going to kind of die off for a little bit until we start getting closer and closer and closer to april beginning so thought any other thoughts on the schedule or anything that sticks out to you from that or just general thoughts about spring football getting started yeah uh that's really interesting i'm always interested to see how the schedule plays out for our new coaching staff and as well as how the 
the media schedule say that like who are you talking to who do you get to talk to and how much uh, yep. we'll hear from coach freeze obviously a good bit but you know which players are we going to see talk to how many which assistants all that stuff um and because each of those provide different perspectives um and so right i'm really interested to see how that goes so they will you said monday wednesday friday is the mainly when they'll practice no practice on Tuesday and Thursday. That was my understanding. I, I have done a quick look through of the schedule that I had released to me from the athletic department. That was my understanding. I have it all written out in my and you know in my calendar and stuff like that. Uh, but that is the the basic outline with a few caveats here and there, uh, which you know obviously you want to get them on a schedule routine. They're in school after all; they are student athletes, so they need to kind of have a red. And they have so many hours they can practice, right? Which you know, there's that all. I would love sometime to sit down and actually someone who has to like analyze all that and count all that and tell me exactly what the rules are. And I know they're listed in the bylaws of all the NCAA, but I want someone to tell me. I don't want to go read it. Yeah. Well, and, then, and then you also have, and I was thinking about this when we were talking about spring break. A lot of the times you have these optional workouts. As a student or athlete led, senior led. For, for those for those not watching, air quote optional or senior advised workouts um that tend we to, are, that tend we to are advising you to come if you do not want to be woken up in the middle of the night by your senior and junior leaders yeah, yeah if you want to like see the field um but yeah so that's interesting i think that'll be really good um to see kind of how things play out and get some on a routine uh, i really like what you said about how this first week is probably going to be about really in, instilling how practice goes on the yep in this this uh regime uh before we really get going where it's it's every other day up until a day um so that it's it's always fascinating there will be no shortage of tidbits and information coming out and there will be even less shortage of overreactions and dramatics that come out um but i mean this spring this spring training is a big deal you know when yes when, now that the portal has become a big thing a lot of decisions will be made off mm -hmm. of what we spring training before that portal opens back up. I picture it opening back up just like in a Marvel multiverse. Avengers style. Endgame. I was just like, watching that tonight. Just like Doctor Strange. Uh, and he, for uh, those who are listening to the audio, he's actually doing the Doctor Strange movements right now, which is a surprisingly good. I'm gonna give or, you. A, I'm gonna give you an A minus on that. Or the Ned from Spider Man. <laughs> what, what What do you want? You're trying to win brownie points with me tonight. What's going on? Like. I, I can talk a little, a little eye to eye. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> we, uh, yeah. So it's a lot of decisions are going to be made here. A lot of ones people like to talk about, like quarterback. I think that's we're going to get a lot of information, and Coach Freeze is going to get a lot of information on what, where he stands, and what he needs to go after in the portal. Yeah. Over the so um, it'll be exciting for sure. Yeah, and obviously we're going to come back and update um, everything for you guys here as as, as we feel it's appropriate. And as we've talked about, there's a lot to cover this spring. And basketball is just – I mean, we're going to be talking a lot of March Madness here, whether yeah. Auburn's in it or not. I'm sure we'll be mentioning something. Um, and obviously with all the spring courts that's going on. And just the things that are happening. We got Frank Thomas statue coming. We got Bucky's opening. We got all these things that are just great part of the Auburn experience to cover on this show. But uh, we will find a way to smash it all in there. But we've got a long, long plethora of month and a half to work our way through what we can glean, speculate, and overreact about with Auburn's spring practice 2023. Excited for it, though, because Lord knows we need something to be excited about in Auburn football right now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here on this episode, episode 25 of the Auburn Experience Podcast with myself, uh, Kyle, and Austin. Austin, if they want to find you out there on the Twitter sphere, where can they or wherever they can find you. On the Twitter sphere, on the Instagram verse, and on the book face, you can find me at Austin G. Scott. Uh, you can find me on the whatever he called it, Twitter sphere, <laughs> at uh, Kyle Loomis24. I think it's the same thing on Instagram. But obviously, follow E2C Network everywhere, even on TikTok. It's, all, it's there. <laughs> follow it there so you can stay up to date with all the content we're doing across all those different platforms. And we appreciate you guys listening, watching whatever however you got here we appreciate you being part of our little family within the auburn family so we talk to you again war eagle war eagle <laughs>